The 5D Mark IV, it came out in the autumn of 2016 and I've been using mine since March of 2017 and after all of that time, I'm still using it. And if you're considering whether or not to get your hands on this piece of quality Canon equipment, you've definitely come to the right place. So welcome to the channel and welcome to another review video. My name is Kai Song and I'm a videographer, filmmaker, editor, YouTuber and all round visual creative. So if any of those things interest you, then do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Now today we are reviewing the 5D Mark IV and what better place to put this camera through its paces than in the historically famous city of Canterbury. So let's jump straight in with the ergonomics of this beast of a camera. And just holding it in your hands, you immediately realize that you have a quality, robust piece of Canon equipment. There's been no skimping on making this quality, fine crafted piece of art. In fact, it has Canon's renowned waterproofing system, making it suitable for all types of working conditions. And weighing in at just 800 grams, less than the 5D Mark III, you can take it on all types of shoots and projects, and it's almost manageable for a full day of work. On the right of the body you've got your dual card slots for SD and CF cards. On the left hand side you find connections for HDMI, a PC terminal which can be used with the flash with an external cord, a USB 3 port for those lightning quick transfers and a microphone and headphone input which means Canon was definitely thinking about the videographers and filmmakers for this one. The 5D Mark IV has an impressive 30.1 megapixel full frame sensor, a big step up from the 22.3 megapixel sensor of the Mark III, but obviously still a far cry from the 50.6 megapixel sensor of the 5D SR. And of course, the main reason most of us get full frame cameras in the first place is down to the large sensors that allow us to shoot higher ISOs, which allow us to shoot in low light conditions without copious amounts of grain. And for the Mark IV, the standard ISO range expanded up to 100 to 32,000, as the Mark III ISO values only range from 100 to 25,600, which means it's great in low light. But again, with all cameras, a major factor will be what type of glass you're putting in front of the sensor, and I always recommend Canon L-Glass. For photographers, you've got a continuous shooting rate of 7 frames per second with autofocus. That puts it at one more than the 5D Mark III. You also get a built-in GPS used for geotag information. This enables you to find out where your photos were taken via the Canon Map Utility, which you can download for free. So if you're traveling around and find an awesome location and then get some great shots and then forget where you took those great shots, you can find that location again via the geotagging information. One of the things that most professionals will appreciate that we've already spoken about about the Canon 5D Mark IV is that it retains dual CF and SD card slots. So even if one of your cards was to fail after a project or a shoot, you'd still have the peace of mind of having all of that content when you get back home. Another massive plus of the Mark IV are the focus points. You have 61 AF points in total, 41 of which are cross type. And of course you have Canon's unrivaled dual pixel autofocus. And video is where DPAF really shines, providing quick, accurate focus without manually zooming the lens. DPAF also makes following and keeping focus on moving subjects much easier and more accurate. This brings us on to another added benefit of the Mark IV, which is the touch screen. And you can easily manage focus and switch between subjects while shooting video using touch screen in live view. For still photography, you can tap anywhere on the LCD screen and get quick, accurate focus. Now this is a huge benefit for filmmakers and videographers alike, especially for Canon users, as you don't get autofocus lines. Whereas you had to eyeball it in the past to make sure that things were in focus, the touch autofocus ensures that your subject of interest is in focus 99% of the time. Although there have been a few odd occasions where it's been a bit soft, to Canon's credit, most of the time it's fully sharp. Like most modern cameras, the Mark IV has Wi-Fi functionality, which is extremely useful to transfer your content to get photos and video clips onto your phone and up on social media. 
but it's also really useful to have an extra screen via your iPhone or iPad or whatever device you're using, which allows you to check what you're shooting or filming if you want to be in shot. Again, this is great for vloggers and people like me who have to shoot B-roll by themselves. And a great point here is that the touch focus functionality also works via your external devices. Another great feature of the 5D Mark IV is that it can do time-lapse functionality. Yes, it has its own inbuilt intervalometer. At the touch of a button, you can have your very own time-lapses without having to set up any additional kit, which is great, especially if carrying lots of kit is not an option for you. Now when it comes to video and FPS, we've got the option of 60 FPS at full HD video, that's 1080p, or 120 FPS at 720p. The 4K filming is a bonus, but it only goes up to 30 FPS, which isn't great when compared to other camera systems on the market. And it has a crop factor of 1.74 when compared to full frame. And this is because it only uses part of the sensor, which is something to bear in mind for future proofing, especially as we move closer and closer to 4K becoming the standard, having that cropped 4K probably isn't a great idea. When it comes to dynamic range, the most notable improvement, according to the DxOMark.com, is the landscape score of 13.6 EV, or exposure value. This is nearly a two-stop advantage over the 5D Mark III, which was recorded at 11.7 EV. So while we're talking about dynamic range, it might be a good idea to mention another benefit of the Mark IV, which is you can have Canon C-Log installed. C-Log is a logarithmic tone curve that produces footage with extra wide dynamic range, and it's claimed by Canon that C-Log delivers 12 stops of dynamic range at 400 ISO, for natural results in high contrast situations. The flat nature of the image produced on the LCD screen does make it hard to see the details, so Canon have installed a vivid picture setting that puts a fake colour correction over the top, making it easier to see, but the outputs will still be that flat C-Log image. Now you do have to pay to get this functionality installed onto your Canon 5D Mark IV. I paid £84 from a recommended dealer to have it installed on mine, that's about $100, but it does make a massive difference to your colour grading. Something to consider for all of you budding filmmakers out there. So, like I said before, I've been using the Mark IV since March of 2017, and I've used it to film weddings, promos, and events. But how does it fare in those real-world situations? Let's spend a little bit of time now to talk about those specific situations. Wedding videography. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know from my pics that Jay got married in the summer of last year. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, then come on, man. Follow the Kai Creative triple I. Anyway. I used the 5D Mark IV to film his wedding, and one of the highlights for me was using a glide cam during the photo shoot. I set up the 5D Mark IV with the 24-105, which is the lens that's currently on here, and having that tap autofocus was invaluable for tracking focus on the faces of the happy couple. Interviews. So since March of 2017, I've used the 5D Mark IV to shoot literally hundreds of interviews and case study videos. Once you've paired it with a 70 to 200 mm f-stop 2.8L lens, it's almost impossible to create anything but professional looking interview footage. Now, if you're interested in using this camera for interviews, I have already created a video on how to create professional interviews. You can find links to that video down in the description below. Event videography. So recently I filmed a company event AGM using a couple of 5D Mark IVs. And again, a great selling point for using this camera at events is that you can pretty much use them all day. You can literally film all day without having any overheating issues or crashes, which is something I've heard happens to other camera brands. You can easily switch between your camera and video modes to get some decent footage and some decent photos. Again, the tap autofocus is a massive plus, especially when filming the audience and then switching to the speaker. And again, the high ISO on the full frame means less grain, especially in the poor lighting conditions of that old London hotel. Promotional content. Another recent opportunity I had was to go to Imperial College London and film some promotional content. So we were out and about in London all day, going to the different campuses using the 5D Mark IV. And this time the 50 FPS really came in useful. Those slow motion B-roll shots just added that much more extra professionalism into the finished content. Vlogging. If you're considering buying a camera for vlogging and vlogging only, 
This is not the camera that you should buy. You should get something like a G7X Mark II. In fact, I've already done a review video on the G7X Mark II. You can find a link to that video down in the description below. But if you insist on using this camera for vlogging, like I do, then you need to use the Wi-Fi functionality because the 5D Mark IV does not have a flip screen. You can't see yourself. You can't see if you're in focus, but by using the Wi-Fi functionality, pairing it to your phone and then using the Canon app on your phone, you can then make use of the tap functionality, tap on your face, and that ensures that everything is in focus. So if you've decided to bite the bullet and purchase one of these workhorses of a, a Canon camera, what is it going to cost you? At the time of making this video, you can purchase a brand new 5D Mark IV from the official Canon store for $2,999 in the United States or £3,200 in the UK. Or even better, buy one secondhand for around $2,000 or £1,700, depending on the condition. So if you're already a Canon user and are familiar with their setup, you will love this camera. The familiar feel, the button placement and the menu system will all be things that you're used to with the addition of some new magical options. So should you buy one? Well, of course, it depends on what you want to do and what type of budget you have. I personally can honestly say that a large amount of my personal income comes from working with this camera. It's part of my job, it's what I do, and I'm currently looking to the future for the next best camera to jump to. As of yet, what Canon has offered in the way of mirrorless full frame systems hasn't tempted me over. So for now, I'm sticking with the Mark IV. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments about corporate videography, do let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to our channel. Stay creative, imagine, implement and inspire. And I will see you guys next time on Kai Creative.